Thank you. Say goodbye to overwhelming textbooks and hello to vibrant interconnected mind maps. We welcome you to our new series of videos where we pick each mind map from our mind map bundle and help you run through all the important points you need to remember for your exams. You can browse our app while watching this video and download the mind maps for enhanced retention. So, let's get started. There are various health agencies across the world which are responsible for ensuring and providing a level of health service to the population. The most important of them all is WHO. The World Health Organization is an international organization with a rich history and a broad mandate in the field of health. Its constitution came into effect on 7th April 1948 with the help of directing and coordinating international health work. India, a significant member country, joined WHO on 12th January 1948 before the organization was officially constituted. The World Health Organization operates through regional organizations with offices located in different parts of the world. These regional organizations include Africa, Washington DC, Denmark, Egypt and Philippines. In the early 2000s, WHO had set specific global health objectives. By the year 2000, they aimed to achieve the following. At least 50% of 5-6 to six year old children should be caries free. The global average of decayed, missing or filled teeth at the age of 12 should not be more than 3. 85% of the population should retain all their teeth at the age of 18. A 50% reduction of edentulousness in the 35 to 40 age group should be accomplished and a 25% reduction in edentulousness at 65 years should be achieved. Additionally, WHO planned to establish a data-based system to monitor changes in oral health. WHO classified dental auxiliaries into two categories, non-operating and operating. Non-operating dental auxiliaries such as dental surgery assistants, receptionists, secretaries, dental lab technicians, dental health educators and denturists assist dentists in clinical work but cannot perform independent procedures. On the other hand, operating dental auxiliaries like dental nurses, dental therapists, dental hygienists and expanded function dental auxiliaries can perform procedures under the supervision of a dentist. Dental nurses, also known as New Zealand type dental nurses, provide dental care to children in schools, including oral examinations, prophylaxis, fluoride application, and dental health education. Dental therapists or New Cross auxiliaries are trained to perform reversible and irreversible procedures but cannot diagnose or plan dental care independently. Dental hygienists focus on oral prophylaxis, oral hygiene instruction, and chair side assistance. Expanded function dental auxiliaries are dental assistants or hygienists who have received additional training to perform specific tasks related to patient treatment. Like we had discussed earlier, there are many health agencies which oversee different aspects of the welfare of the population. Some health agencies and their respective headquarters are seen in our mind map here. There were many programs and campaigns initiated to solve problems or create awareness about health-related issues. Some important points to note include the Colombo Plan, initiated in 1950, focuses on cooperative economic and social development in Asia and Pacific countries, providing assistance and expertise to improve living standards and coordinate developmental efforts. It provides visits to countries by experts who can offer advice on local problems and train the local people. The Rockefeller Foundation has been actively involved in various projects in India since 1920, addressing health issues like hookworm infections and contributing to the establishment of the All India Institute of Hygiene and Public Health in Kolkata. The UNICEF GOBI, Growth Monitoring, Oral Rehydration, breastfeeding, immunization. Campaign was a comprehensive child health program implemented by UNICEF in the 1980s. The campaign aimed to improve child survival and well-being in developing countries through a set of integrated interventions. The components of the GOBI campaign were 
Firstly, regular monitoring of a child's growth through weight and height measurements to detect and address malnutrition and growth faltering at an early stage. The second target is the promotion and distribution of oral rehydration solution, ORS, a simple and cost-effective treatment for diarrhea to prevent dehydration and reduce child mortality. Another aim is the encouragement and support for exclusive breastfeeding during the first six months of a child's life as it provides essential nutrients and helps protect against infections. Lastly, immunization, which is the promotion and provision of vaccines to protect children against diseases such as measles, pertussis, diphtheria, tuberculosis, tetanus and polio. The Integrated Child Development Service or ICDS scheme launched in 1975 focuses on improving the health and development of children in India. Health organizations have marked certain days of the calendar to be celebrated as days related to health and health issues, which aim to create awareness among people. Some examples of such days are listed here in the mind map for you to take a look at. If we talk about dental manpower, what does it look like in India? There are approximately 298 dental institutions producing 25,000 to 30,000 BDS graduates every year. In 2004, the dentist population ratio was 1 is to 30,000, which means there was one dentist for every 30,000 individuals. However, the distribution of dentists is uneven. In 1990, there were 3,000 registered dental hygienists and 5,000 laboratory technicians in India. The ratio at that time was one hygienist available for every seven dentists and one lab technician available for every four dentists. The ideal ratio is considered to be one is to one, where there is one auxiliary for every dentist. Regarding dental auxiliaries in India, the most suitable option for the country is the school-going dental nurse or the expanded function dental auxiliary. Currently, the dental auxiliaries in India include dental surgery assistant, dental lab technician and dental hygienist. These professionals play important roles in supporting dental care and services alongside dentists. Apart from all the auxiliaries we have discussed above, what are some other types of dental auxiliaries? First one is Frontier Auxiliaries, who were introduced in Alaska in 1981. They perform tasks such as oral prophylaxis, dental education and dental first aid. There are also other new categories of auxiliaries such as Dental Licentiate. A dental licentiate is a semi-independent operator who undergoes training for two years. They possess a certain level of autonomy in performing dental procedures. Another auxiliary role is the dental aid. Dental aids primarily provide first aid for pain relief, extraction of teeth under local anesthesia and control of hemorrhage. They play a crucial role in assisting patients in managing dental emergencies and relieving their discomfort. These additional auxiliary roles contribute to the dental team by expanding the range of services that can be provided and ensuring the accessibility of dental care to a wider population. With this, we come to an end of this video discussion. You can go through our mind map here for some more detailed points. Good luck!